It's a quarter to one in the morning. I've been doing online college work all day to my absolute joy. And I've just been so enthusiastic about it that I just had the energy drained out of me and I'm just not feeling a proper um, cinematic intro, if you will. But anyway, um, welcome to my 2020 MacBook Air unboxing. I got the $1,000 or the $999 baseline model with a dual core i3, um, just because I wanted to see how well the budget one performs. And as you can imagine, today I'm taking it out of the box to share my first impressions with you. And I will eventually be comparing it to devices like the iPad Pro and probably the i5 model and eventually reviewing it as well. But before we get into this unboxing, I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions as the YouTube algorithm likes that and will help push my content to more people. And if you're a recurring viewer, be sure to click the bell icon and turn on all notifications. I've had many people do this lately and it has made a world of a difference in how my content performs and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. All right guys, I've been waiting all day to do this. This actually arrived at like 10.30 this morning, but I had like tests to study for and classes to attend and here we are at like past midnight. So um, I'm very excited. I have I've never owned a MacBook Air, let alone a new one. So let's um, take the plastic off very satisfyingly, if that's even a word. I'm not even gonna try to sound articulate right now because I'm just tired. So yeah, once again, we have the i3 dual core model that starts out at $1,000. I got this for $8.99 with student pricing, so that was pretty nice. And um, yeah, let's pull the lid off here. Any day now. So here's the laptop. I got it in the gold color because I wanted it to look exciting for a thumbnail. And also I've never owned a gold Apple product. I mean, I do have an older iPad, but I never bought a new gold Apple product. Anyway, I already sound so stupid, but let's get the plastic off here. And of course, um, before I open this up here, let's just take a look at what's in the box. Before we forget about these things entirely, we have some paperwork that I'm probably not gonna touch. We have um, a charging cable and a brick. So this is like similar to like, I can't even get this out of the box. My God, Ugh. This is similar to like what you get with an iPad now. And then we get a USB-C charging cable, which is nice, but I'm gonna leave everything here nice and pretty. Put the plastic back in the box. So let's put this off to the side right quick. Bring the main attraction up to the front. Let's open it up here, shall we? Here we go. Immediately, immediately I can tell that the keyboard is different because they're no longer using the original butterfly. Look at me trying to get this thing off. This is what happens when you take a midterm and you go to like a two hour math class nonstop all day. Um, anyway, the keyboard definitely looks different, very reminiscent of the 16-inch um, MacBook Pro, if not identical in some way. In the meantime, while my iCloud is setting up, if I can even show you this, if it focuses, we have a headphone jack still and two Thunderbolt connectors on the side here. Maybe I can show it to the camera over there. I'm not used to having dual angle here, but that's what we're doing because the laptop is harder to show from the top down, I think. I want to have more perspectives or whatever. All right, come on. Siri, yes. Can I just use my Mac? I would like to use my Mac. Sure. Touch ID. Okay, so let's do Touch ID. We all know about this. It's a separate button, and it's been like that since the refresh. Um, this sort of Touch ID button was brought over to the 16-inch MacBook Pro, but this has been a thing for a little while, as I just said. Love being redundant. Change it to dark mode. Dope. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? We're doing True Tone. Setting up your Mac. All right. All right. Giggity, giggity. And we are now finally booted in after a little bit too long. It's 1.12 a.m. We're already doing great. Let's uh, do a typing test, first of all, um, because I want to talk more about this keyboard. I kind of have a feel for it, but I want to get even more of a feel for it before I say anything. So 10fastfingers.com. Oh, no. It's like I'm fast, and then I'm slow and fast, and it just keeps alternating. I'm also tired, too, so... I'm usually better, so don't underestimate me, all right? Okay, so that's pretty, it's not great for me, but whatever. I'm usually like 96 words per minute and like 95% accuracy, but like, oh, whatever. 
So yeah, this keyboard, um, I'm already a fan. Um, part of me sort of kind of likes the clickiness of the butterfly switches with my MacBook Pro 13 inch, but um, I really like the keyboard with the MacBook Pro 16 inch and it's the same deal here. You get more travel, it's more reminiscent to the previous gen MacBook Pro Retinas and the previous gen MacBook Air, that's for sure. So if you were hesitant to upgrade because of the keyboards being kind of um, this is definitely so much better. And yeah, I think it's a great blend between the best parts of the butterfly key switches and the best parts of the previous gen keyboard in a more slim form factor, if you will. And let's do a quick speaker test here because I heard maybe these are better. I don't know. I haven't really tested a MacBook Air, but I'm going to give you my impressions of the speaker setup anyway. I swear to God, every one of these sounds the same, but one of them will do. Alex Holmes and Dark Point. Turn the volume up with the keys. No touch bar, by the way, before we continue. I'm not really missing the touch bar too much. I mean, I like the touch bar, it's cool, but this top function row, it's pretty nice. I mean, it's tactile. I kind of miss that with my MacBook Pro, but uh, yeah, that's a side note. Let's just continue with the speaker test here. Okay, so I listened to an intro, a drop. Is the speaker setup the best I've ever heard? No, on the MacBook Pro 16 inch, for example, is way better, but I'm really enjoying the fullness of the sound. Um, I'm getting a lot of highs and mids. Of course, like I said, not the perfect setup, but I'd say it's comparable to the MacBook Pro, maybe like 85% uh, there, maybe 90% there, but yeah. Great speaker setup with this, I'm very impressed. I don't know how it compares to the previous gen MacBook Air or the previous previous gen MacBook Airs that are, you know, silver, obviously the, you know, more legacy type ones, but yeah. So far, this speaker setup has been great for music listening as we've experienced here, and um, I assume it'd be great for movie watching and any other audio oriented tasks you'd be doing with this laptop. Let me download Geekbench 5 here real quick because I wanna see how this um, uh, laptop benchmarks it compared to like my 13 inch MacBook Pro and such, it is dual core. Um, so let's download this for Mac. Here we go, CPU, run CPU benchmark. I have not looked at any benchmark scores online here. The numbers that I'm gonna see are for the first time. So we will wait and see what happens. But in the meantime, I'll reiterate the specs. Um, we got a 1.1 gigahertz dual core Intel core i3 processor that like turbos up to like, let me check the box here. Uh, turbos up to 3.2 gigahertz pretty impressive we also have eight gigabytes of 3733 megahertz lpddr4 and intel iris plus graphics oh and we have 256 gigs or 250 gigs really of storage standard with this laptop which is so much better than 128 gigs i found that capacity to be a little bit limiting in my experience with like my baseline macbook pro for example uploading results and the numbers are survey says 826 1897 very interesting. You know, it's funny. This scores worse than an iPad Pro. So I'm seeing some single core scores around a thousand, some 700, but I'm seeing pretty consistent multi-core. So it's like 800-ish up to a thousand single core and around 1500, 1600 multi-core. So yeah, this performs worse than an iPad Pro, what am I doing? The scores are right here. Yeah, um, that's a little bit sobering. Honestly, I thought it was gonna do better, but then again, this is a dual core laptop that is very much meant towards, you know, typing up documents. I mean, this is like a teacher's laptop, a student's laptop, if you're gonna be doing a lot of online tasks and stuff. And the cheaper price does kind of justify that, but at the same time, you can get a quad core processor customly put in for an additional $100. And it makes a huge difference, as you can see here, if we look at some of the benchmarks, um, you get around a thousand single core with the quad core i5, but you also get um, nearly a thousand more points in the multi-core score, actually probably like 1200 points, really. Let me see here, like if I can do math in my head, 1500, actually probably like 1800. Let me just do this math. I'm so sorry, I'm smarter than this. So like, yeah, 1600 more points with the quad core and multi-core situation. So that might be the better option if you wanna be doing video editing and such, but we're gonna be testing that with this laptop regardless. I do plan honestly on getting an i5 model. But yeah, I did buy this because I wanted to see what it could do despite 
its um, Geekbench scores, which, you know, of course, are a little bit deceiving because these numbers don't dictate everyday performance. Mac OS is very much optimized for this hardware, and we're going to see how it performs. I'm trying to think of anything else I should talk about. The trackpad is nice and big, and of course, it has the force click, so you can click it in any orientation or at any position on the glass surface here because it doesn't actually click. It just has a little haptic engine on the inside. The display is nice and bright here. It has true tone as well, which makes it um, look really great in any lighting condition. It's also sharp. We have a retina display here. So yeah, to kind of reiterate here, the keyboard, much better. A great blend between the old and new keyboards that we've seen from Apple. Um, the overall performance is a bit weak, to be honest, but I mean, like, we're going to see just how well this laptop performs in everyday circumstances. And of course, some heavier tasks, which I'll test, like probably playing Minecraft, editing video in Final Cut, and like Photoshop and other creative tasks. We're going to see if the cheapest laptop can accommodate those functions functions. And so far, I am impressed with this laptop. I love the color. I like the modest upgrades. I like the base storage being increased. And I'm pretty confident that this baseline model is definitely for some kind of user. Just because it doesn't have a quad core i5 doesn't make it totally useless to everyone. And that about wraps things up. I hope this video was helpful, especially if you're looking at the baseline MacBook Air. Like I said, it's definitely for someone out there. We're just going to find out who exactly in my future videos and tests and whatnot. I hope that you're safe. I hope that you're healthy. And I hope that you you're at home, um, regardless of if your state has issued a lockdown or not. Social distancing is super important, so please take it seriously. Expect my iPad Pro unboxings coming today or maybe tomorrow. I don't know at this point. I got to see when they come and if they come and how they come and everything. And I got to edit this video for today. I go to bed and rinse and repeat and do some more online college because it's just so fun, let me tell you. I'm probably gonna make a video about that me bitching about it, to be honest. I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions, and subscribe for more content like this. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.